Welcome to the channel friends. So today's video is going to be a quick update on the ZR1 Corvette and I want to talk about uh, the catch can setup I have on this car because I've been asked a couple times here and there uh, about my catch can setup which is right there as you can see the Mighty Mouse um, and how I plumb it up. So as you see it here it's slightly different than I had it a couple years ago. So a couple years ago I have the Mighty Mouse Wild uh, catch can and I have it basically plumbed in. There is an adapter that comes with the Mighty Mouse kit right there off the valve cover where your oil fill cap is which really isn't used in this car. Uh, and then there's an, a dash, uh, dash 10 fitting. It's a 150 degree which goes around the back of the motor. And then it comes out here on this side, which would attach to the dash 10 fitting on the, the catch can. So that's the dirty side. The catch can is installed on your dirty side of the system, if you don't know. So then it's attached to an AN6 line, which is a smaller fitting on the catch can. There's only two. If you buy the wild uh, catch can, they make a few different versions. But for the most part, you know, you're going to be want, buying uh, not the race version, but the wild version that has the filter and the diaphragm uh, which doesn't have the remote line so as you see it here only two ports you have an in and you have an out so the the out is actually going to a vacuum source so this line here a dash six line goes right to the snout right here so that pulls a vacuum and pulls all those gases out under normal condition so when your car is um, experiencing a lot of blow by, you know, i.e., when you're revving the piss out of it and you're making a lot of horsepower and you have a thing revving at 6,500 or whatever, yeah, you know, you're going to build up excessive crankcase pressure and it's going to have to be relieved somewhere. So essentially, it's going to be relieved through this vent right here. Now, I've never had any issues with this can, okay? I don't smell anything, I don't notice any oil. After I install the catch can, I have zero oil in the, in the actual intake track and the supercharger. It is bone dry. So if you guys have an issue with your catch can and you, you're still experiencing, you know, oil residue in your supercharger or in your intake manifold, you don't have it installed correctly or you have some kind of pressure issue with your motor. So there's an underlying issue if you have this catch can and you still see oil residue in the intake. So with that being said, I want to show you also an addition I have to the Mighty Mouse here. I also use the Elite Engineering Clean Side Air Separator, I believe they call it. So this replaces the dry sump tank cap and is vented from the intake tube here. So from the, the duct coming off the air filter, this tube runs all the way up and underneath and then up and over onto this cap. So I have everything kind of tucked away and routed differently than stock because this car is highly modified and I wanted to clean up the engine bay and have the valve covers exposed and the rails. That way I can look straight at the supercharger and you know, the whole kind of motor assembly and not have all these damn wires and hoses going across, which drives me nuts. So I took a lot of time in redirecting a lot of these lines. So a lot of the stuff you see here, you know, today in this video, um, it's not, it might not apply to your car because uh, uh, pretty much nothing about this engine bay is stock. I've redirected almost every single line, vacuum line, boost line, um, you name it, to make it look good. So as you can see, you can look right into the valve covers and not have a bunch of crap in the way. I also made my own custom bolt set stainless steel and jeweled the head on them. So. It really gives a nice, you know, kind of finishing touch. ARP bolts here and there. You know, I have the DC power alternator. Uh, but that's, you know, stuff for another video. I also want to go over uh, the fuel system, which is pretty extensive in this car. I did a complete fuel system, as you can see. And I have a crossover line going across the supercharger in the front here. Radium rails, radium, almost everything. Uh, four innovations, fuel pump, and uh, things like that and fuel fittings. All right, so let's get back to the existing catch can setup. Uh, like I said before, I had one single dash 10 line going to the Mighty Mouse. Now I have, in this configuration here, two 
dash 10 lines, one off of each valve cover. So I have that same position there in the back, as well as another position here I machined in with another dash 10 fitting going out. And I will take this out and show you in detail what it looks like, but it comes out, both of them go into a Y block and then the Y block output goes in and goes around and comes back into the catch can right here, that fitting in the back. I will show you guys all this in detail when I take this out because it's really hard to see right now uh, with this tank in the way. So this is a Quartz Performance Racing Tank. I've kind of highly modified. I have a custom fill here so I can properly fill this system because this intercooler system that I'm working on right now is a total custom system. I have one pump on each side and basically it's going to be one pump per brick and one tank per brick but utilizing the same Edelbrock heat exchanger. The Edelbrock heat exchanger has custom TIG welded dual ins and dual outs as you can see right there. Dual in and dual out. All right, so getting back to the catch can, two lines coming in to the catch can. Uh, that's going to be sufficient enough for a thousand wheel. If I have any issues and uh, I notice any additional blow by, uh, I may step that up to dash 12 lines. But right now I have dual dash 10s going into the catch can and uh, the Elite Engineering clean air side separator. So if you don't know, the Elite Engineering clean side air separator there, as I showed you on top of the dry sum tank, that collects the last 10% of the oil vapor that the catch can cannot capture. So the catch can only captures about 90%. This will capture the rest, giving you almost 100, basically 100%, because like I said, uh, there was no oil residue or carbon or any residue whatsoever when I opened this, uh, this last time around, when I first started the engine build here, so, <clears throat> sorry. So, nothing in the engine, nothing in the supercharger, clean as a bone, the way I left it um, as it was assembled last year. So, Mighty Mouse Catch Can, clean side air separator from Elite Engineering, highly recommended. It will give you a bone dry intake. So, let me go ahead now and remove this Cords Performance Racing tank and show you the plumbing uh, and how it's routed because it's kind of confusing here uh, you don't see it all laid out because that's in the way so give me a couple of minutes and I'll take this out and I'll show you up close all right so welcome back here is the mighty mouse up close and uh, the way I have it configured here I have the dash 10 on the in and the dash 6 on the out which goes to a vacuum source so you can configure these catch cans in all sorts of different ways okay you can Put a remote line for the bleeder on the bottom to drain the oil. You can do all sorts of different configurations. They sell different types. But the way you see it here, it's a simple tube fitting system. You have an in and you have an out. And then you have a sight glass, which you can see through there, some oil. Um, the media in there is like a kind of like a ribbon type steel. So it looks like kind of like Brillo pad almost. Uh, and it helps the oil coalesce and stay at the bottom like a baffle um, as it pours in the oil builds up on the bottom and then you drain it and essentially the vacuum and all the rest of the air the clean stuff comes out this way so it goes back into the intake uh, I've had zero issues like I said I've drained um, probably about this much oil out of it maybe five six ounces so I know it works and I know uh, the results which is a bone dry intake and supercharger no oil residue no carbon no crap in there and when I tell you it's clean, it was clean when I took it apart. So um, that's a good sign that the catch can and the Elite Engineering clean side air separator is working. So that's the catch can up close. I have the billet mount. I had to, to make my own relocation brackets because the CPR tank does not work with the billet mount. You have to have the Mighty Mouse standard stainless steel clamp mount. Uh, that's something I was not aware about. I just don't understand why it's not compatible. I guess uh, the location wise, it's not good. So this is what I had to do to make it work in my configuration, my setup. I made up a set of brackets and painted them. Uh, but overall, this is the CPR tank. It's highly modified. Um, you know, I had my issues with it. 
the threaded cap would not seal when I got it and I went back and forth and got a brand new cap a brand new tank and um, had that issue addressed and then I went forward and added my own fill because my custom intercooler system uh, is not anything standard so I have to make sure I can properly fill this is where I'm gonna do that I'll remove that plug and fill from there with a hose and a funnel and a barb so that's that set up in a in a nutshell I don't want to go too lengthy in the in the process um, this is a foam insulation that I will be covering with something else to make it look better I don't think this looks that great but it's more of a function um, standpoint than uh, than looks uh, but I do have some nicer stuff that I will cover over this and make it look nice uh, just right now I'm taking it in and out of the engine bay and I don't want to gouge up uh, the newer material so I'm leaving it like this uh, until I'm ready to kind of finish off and install this intercooler system uh, once I'm done laying it out. So that'll be the final step once I install the tank. But let's go to the car now and I'll show you uh, what the lines look like on the other end. So we have the in and then this is the out. And we'll go right to the car. This right here is that AN10-10 line that goes to the in, and this here is the out, which goes to the vacuum source. So as you can see, everything is laid out in a different way. I have one line coming off the valve cover here, and then the other line is behind here down low going into the Y block. Let me turn the light on a little more here so you guys can see. All right, so that should be better. So both dash 10 lines go into the Y block into a 180, and then that 180 goes into a 150, which goes into the catch can inlet port. And also the way I route um, and reroute the venting for the dry sump is different. So we have the clean side air separator sitting right there that goes to the intake duct then as you you place it on here you're gonna have to redo all this configuration here I had to cap this off and then this is the new vent line which goes to the valve covers so I have it kind of bent down with this nice silicone tubing all the way down going into a T then it has to vent your dry sump there's another line that connects down low then it goes this way tees off this tees off into the front here that, that goes where does that go that goes to right here the valve cover so the valve cover barb this line right here if you can see right there that's where it attaches and then it tees off again it's in the same spot goes to the other side on the valve cover as well so it basically branches off um, just like the stock I took apart the stock hard line and I redid all this with clamps and silicone tubing and this nice Parker 801 hose, which is heavy duty, uh, kink free hose. I like using that stuff for everything. Pretty much everything on this car is Parker 801. So as you can see, nothing here is stock. So it looks a lot different than maybe your car. Um, but I decided to remove the stock hard lines because those hard lines that attach to the dry sump are not compatible with the CPR tank you will have an interference issue. You cannot install those lines if you have the CPR tank here because it butts up right here and the line goes straight out this way. So I had to redo all these lines because of the CPR tank. Uh, that's something that uh, CPR does not mention. You know, there's a lot of things that these companies, these aftermarket companies do not mention you have to modify uh, on your car. Uh, so plan on doing extra work when you buy these aftermarket parts because they never come in, drop in. Um, the case for me has been Almost every part has to have some kind of modification to make it work. Um, so with that being said, um, I just want to talk about the rest of it. Uh, as you can see here, this is where the Elite Engineering cap would go. This was all redone. And, um, you know, it, it works out good. It, it's nice and tucked away. I like the, uh, the outcome, the results here. And um, I'm able to fit everything the way I want it. And I can keep the valve covers all open and there's nothing in the way. So I'm happy with that. All right, so moving along, I want to wrap up this video. Uh, I highly recommend the Mighty Mouse catch can. 
It's worked great for me in the past with a bone dry intake and I'm happy with the results. And now I want to see what it does with this increased power level. Uh, I should be right around, you know, 900 plus wheel, uh, maybe close to a thousand. We'll see. Yeah, uh, we'll see what it entails. So next video I want to do is a fuel system video, quite the extensive uh, fuel upgrade on this car. New lines, new pump, new rails, new filter. I've done everything over and it was quite the process to get everything fitted just right uh, into the way I like. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. I'll have that coming up next. Uh, also, I'll probably post a first startup video of the bass tune on the car. So the car is running. It sounds great. And I want to kind of showcase that for you guys. So with that being said, guys, uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And uh, please like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. That will help the channel greatly. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.